Good morning. It's been that kind of morning. I, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Running a few minutes late here, but we are so glad to be with you um, for Sunday school this morning. Going to skip this a little bit. This is Wait on the Lord by Elevation. want to get that chorus in. It says, I'm going to wait on you. I tasted your goodness, trusting your promises. Hallelujah. Learning how to wait on God is one of the final arts in life and truly, truly will revolutionize uh, your life and living. Waiting on the Lord. Hallelujah. So again, that is Wait on the Lord by Elevation. I worship this morning. Bring it up a little bit. Ooh, good morning, good morning. Last week, uh, we talked about humility, and this week, good morning, Sister Sadie, so good to see you. Um, this morning, we're going to talk about trusting in God. Where's your trust? This is kind of a tune-up. You know, every now and then, we take our vehicles in for a tune-up. want to make sure everything is okay, and we have to get that oil change and look at those systems. And so this morning, uh, this lesson is a tune-up. Where is your trust? For truly, if we are saved, if, if we have received Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we, we trust him, we have faith in him, but, but for the all of our life and living, where is your trust this morning? Hallelujah. So we're going to pray and we're going to get started with the lesson. Um, and that's why I chose this song this morning, Wait on the Lord. Waiting, learning to wait on the Lord flows out of trusting him. That, that even when you feel like you should be doing something or something should be happening and you don't see anything, and, and, but you know God, that, that knowing flows out of that place of trust. So just going to look at that this morning. Hallelujah. Good morning, Brother Gary. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you this morning. We're just going to exhale in your presence. Woo! Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father God, for loving us, for keeping us, for bringing us to this moment in time, God, where we recognize that we need you like never before, God. And we're going to put our all of our trust in you this morning. We repent, oh God, for the places where we tried to do it on our own, gotten impatient and trying to work it out, figure it out, make it happen. But God, today we put all of our trust in you. We put all of our eggs in you, in this one basket in you, God, because you are faithful and you are true and you are able and you will deliver. You are the one and the only one who can really, really, really Bring us to that place, oh God, of peace and rest and joy in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word, God, that you have given unto us, your word that is established and everything else is going down but the word. So as we study it this morning, God, as we're looking into it, God, we pray for revelation, for light to come in every place, every situation, God, every person who will watch this, who will partake of this lesson this morning. God, I decree light and I decree revelation in the name of Jesus, God, that they would be able to see what they have not seen before. For your word declares, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, but it's revealed by your spirit. And God, that's what we're asking for this morning and expecting great revelation of you 
this morning. Thank you, oh God. We pray, oh God, for our nation, uh, for the nations of the world, God, that there would be light, oh God, revelation this morning in every place, in every situation, that there would be healing and deliverance and salvation, God, that you would show up and show out today, God. Thank you for hearts that can believe you and can expect you. Thank you, God, for those who are standing in the gap for others, oh God, that you may, you may show up and show out in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the reports coming forward, oh God, the reports of healing, reports of deliverance, reports of salvation. We call them forth now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God for strength now to the body, God. We decree it now in the name of Jesus that places where we feel like, oh God, giving up or we're tired, oh God, we decree strength this morning and that again we will say, I trust you, God. And let that peace roll in and knowing that you, God, cause all things to work together for our good. In the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good morning, Sister Rita. So glad to have you. We're talking about where is your trust? We're asking that question and we're doing a checkup, a tune-up this morning uh, in, in our lives and in our hearts. We're going to start with Psalms 18 um, this morning. Uh, verse, we'll start at verse 1 and read down through a few of those. And we have a few other scriptures that we will share. Um, uh, again, my technology is still not where it was, but I'm grateful to be here with you this morning. So uh, make note of the scriptures. Um, Psalms 18 is where we're starting and then we'll maybe go to Philippians chapter 4 6 all right let's let's begin reading and I'm reading the amplified version this morning uh David starts the psalm off well I want to read the beginning of the psalms you know like uh, in some translations they have an intro for the psalms kind of the setting or who wrote it and that kind of thing so I'm going to read that part as well um uh in this amplified translation uh, Psalms 18, it says, David praises the Lord for rescuing him. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spoke the words of this song to the Lord on the day when the Lord rescued him from the hands of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, okay, so now we're going to get into verse one, but that's the setting or, or the context in which he wrote this song. Uh, this psalm, it was a day of deliverance from his enemies, including Saul. Hallelujah. Now look at verse one. He, he starts out by saying, I love you, O Lord, my strength. Glory to God. I told you, if we learn how to wait on the Lord, and that's what the scripture says, they that wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. And David here has experienced the deliverance of the Lord. Um, so he says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. Verse two, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and the one who rescues me. My God, my rock and strength in whom I trust and take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation. My high tower, my stronghold. And we're gonna stop there for a moment and we're talking about where is your trust? David had put his trust in the Lord and the reward of that trust had shown up on this day and he began to write a song, begin to sing God a praise that starts out, oh, I love you, Lord, you are my strength. And what, what one thing we need to remember is that trust, trusting God leads to experience because when you trust God, then you will step out on what he says and what he has declared but but it it it's it's like a, a cycle or a circle so trusting leads to experiencing but then that experiences deepens the trust and it starts all in it, it and and it goes again so now i trust you more so i'm going to step out or go a little bit farther or or go uh settle on not settle on but go farther into the depths of where you're leading me and, and, and where you're taking me and into my destiny. In other words, when I trust God, then I will do what he says and I will depend on what he says. Uh, the definition for trust in this scripture in the Hebrews 
is to seek refuge, to flee for protection, put trust in God. So trust involves a place. Trust establishes a place or you come to know God as a place of refuge. And so that you know that no matter if you have to, what he, where he leads you, it may lead you through some valleys. It may lead you through some waters. It may lead you through some fires, but it's in God where you have your trust and you have a refuge, a place of protection so that you don't quit and you don't you don't cut it short. Don't cut your trip short through the valley because you'll end up having to go that same way again. It's something about God that he knows the way. Hallelujah. In fact, Jesus Christ says, I am the way. So the way that he leads us, he knows that it's, it's best for us. And when we try to cut that trip short, because we take our eyes on him and uh, take our eyes off him and we don't trust him in that moment, we'll find you'll have to, you'll end up having to go that way because that's the way. That is the way that God has ordained for our lives. And so in another Psalm, very famous 23, Psalms 23, David says, so even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? He had put his trust in in the Lord. So this morning, just taking a checkup, where is our trust? Last year, uh, last August, last year, when we were um, getting ready to go back to school after the COVID shutdown and all of that, you know, that was one of my scriptures, uh, Psalms 23 and 4, though I walked through the valley of shadow of death, I stepped out on that Psalm right there and I went back to work in peace. And, and, and with an assurance, I went back with my trust in God and I was able to, to, to maintain that. And I didn't spend my days biting my nails and wondering if I was going to get COVID and if the children would bring it in. And all, 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 all. I thank God for that. But it's putting it's it matters where we put our trust. When I put my trust in God, then I can reap the harvest, the reward of what it is to trust God. And David shared some of that, some of that in, in verse two. Look, he had found God. He only knew God as a rock because he had experienced God and that trust deepened and he experienced God as a rock. Then he says, you're my fortress. A fortress is, is a place that, that becomes a defense post for you against the enemy. So he experienced God as fortress because he put his trust in God. And then he says, and the one who rescues me, God is the one. He sits high. You know, you think about when you go swimming, and especially if you don't swim well, it, it, it is good to go in a place where there's a lifeguard, someone who is sitting up high, watching over the events of that swimming area so that if there's trouble, they can jump in and rescue you and pull you out. Well, God is the lifeguard of our lives. He sits high, literally sits high, and he's looking and watching over our lives. And when when we need him, just when we need him most, he knows, he knows. He will allow us to, to experience the waves and to experience the ripples and the tides of life, but he won't let you go under. Hallelujah. When you put your trust in God, like David, you'll find out he's the one who rescues you. Even the word salvation literally means one of the definitions for salvation, for being saved, is rescue. He rescued me from me. From, from from the from the, the the consequences and the elements of sin he rescued me he pulled me out and he established me and washed me and set my feet in an even place hallelujah that is the God that we serve he is the one who rescues us and so David goes on and he says my God my rock and strength Hallelujah. You, you, you write intimate personal psalms or songs, praises unto God. You offer those when you have experienced what it is to trust him and you see him show up. Hallelujah. 
and, and, and he says, in whom I trust, and then I take refuge. So not only are you my refuge, but I take refuge. That's the place that I run to. And so this morning we're asking the question, where is your trust? Are you running to the refuge? Because because perhaps we've experienced God like David as the strength, as the rock, as the refuge, the fortress. And he goes on down and say, you know, my high tower, my shield, my buckler, you've, you've experienced God. But if, if you're not very conscious and if I'm not very conscious, I'll take my eyes off God and start trying to work stuff out for myself. I'll forget to run to that place that I know is the sure place, hallelujah. And, and so today is just tune up. So when we go to Philippians chapter four, let's go there for a moment. And in the midst of the world that we're living in, we have literally, well, I will say I, I for, for you too probably, you, we have not seen times like this. We perhaps thought about them and, 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 and read about them. We read in our histories about some great depressions and some times of, of life, but, but in our lifetime, and I'm looking at those who are with me now, we, we, we've not known these kind of times. And so we need to be very vigilant about trusting God. Hallelujah. Don't leave it to chance. Don't think that your flesh mind is going to automatically go there, but you decide, you be like Proverbs 3 uh, says, don't lean towards your own understanding, but it, uh, but put all your trust in God and let him establish your way, establish your path in every situation. Now, I'm trying to get to Philippians here. So let me, let me, yes, Philippians chapter four, verse six. Look at what this says. This is also in the Amplified, verse six. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. All right. Don't be anxious or worried about anything. Now that right there, we need to plaster across our TV screens, across our mirrors, across our windshields, because this is a time where it is easily it is so easy to become worried and anxious. I'm telling y'all, I went to the Dollar General store here in Jackson yesterday and the shelves, so many aisles, at least three, four aisles, the shelves were literally almost bare. And they have a sign up about lack of help in their warehouses. And so they're not getting shipments in. But, but when you see that kind of of, 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 of situation, you, it, it, it is tempting to be worried. And really I had the thought, do I need to be, you know, buying extra and putting up and storing and, and there is a place for that. But, 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 but what our eyes see and what our ears are hearing in the world that we're living in, we have to be vigilant to do what uh, Philippians four and six is saying, don't be anxious or worried. Don't be pushed there by what you see and what you hear in your surroundings. If you need to prepare and to stock up, let it be because God is saying, uh, like he told Joseph, he gave Joseph instructions when it was time to store up and to be ready. Let, let your instructions, my instructions come from the heart of God, but not out of fear, not, of, not out of anxiousness, not out of worriedness, but out of relationship, out of that place with God. Because I'm telling you, God is the one who is sitting high and he's watching. And if we will, we will consciously and be vigilant about the relationship with him to rest in him. He'll tell us when it's time and, and he'll give us indication of, 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 of what's coming. There'll be prophecy on the land. Hallelujah. To, to, because he doesn't want us caught unaware. Hallelujah. He wants us to be prepared and able to, to endure it all. But ultimately he has to be that place. He has to be that source. He has to be the supply in our lives. And then he will cause us to know what to do in the natural so that it's all aligned, but we're not to live out of that place of worriedness and anxiousness that, that, that is being uh, so pushed upon us 
by the times that we're living in. Hallelujah. But but it, it tells us how we are to live in, in this uh, uh, verse six here. We are to live by prayer and petition to God with thanksgiving in everything, in every situation, trusting God. And I'll only go to God for everything if I trust him for everything. You'll only go to God for what you trust him for. If you think you can get it done, if I think I can get it done in my own strength, then I won't trust in God. And that's what another Psalm says, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. And this was a situation when they were going out to battle. Uh, so some were trusting in their armament and their chariots and their horses. But, but, but the psalmist that, and it may have been David, I'm not sure that wrote that one, but I'm going to trust in the arm of the Lord, the one who is able to reach and deliver my fortress, my refuge. That's where I've got my trust. We've got a lot of natural tools or and information in, in, uh, in the natural we, God has, has afforded us such natural existence. So we're, we're not ignoring the natural, but we're saying that the very source, the very supply, the very expectation has to be in God first. And then God leads us and, 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 he, and he teaches us how to live in this natural realm. So where's our trust this morning? We just want to do a checkup. And then Romans 8, 28, always reminds us that God will cause all things. This is a place where a scripture where we can find rest when we can remember that. Now I want to read it in this Amplified. Check it out. It's Romans 8, 28. And we know knowing flows out of a place of experience where you have come to trust. You only know what you trust or you know, or you trust what you know. All right. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan. God has a way of weaving it in. And, and if he can't use it, then, then I'm, I'm of um, T.D. Jakes. I read in one of his books a long time ago that if God can't use it, if he can't work it in the plan, he won't even allow it in your life. Hallelujah. And, and, and that has blessed me for for years and years to know that if, if God is allowing this in my life, he can do what's, uh, what Romans 8 and 28 is saying. He can work it in the plan. It's going to work out for my good. All right. So I'm going to keep reading this. He causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, who trust God. Hallelujah. To those who are called according to his plan and his purpose for those, for those whom he foreknew, this is verse 29, and loved and chose beforehand, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son and ultimately share in his complete sanctification. Now, we, we in other words, God foreknew us. He knew us in our mama's womb. He was the one that knit us together. And we begin to trust this scripture that God can cause all things to work together for good. I don't care how dire straight it is, how hard it was, how gut-wrenching it, it, it is. God can cause it to work together for good uh, uh, for those who are called for his purpose and that he, because he's already predestined or made up his mind that we're to be and be formed into the image of his son, to, to have that place where we belong to him and he belongs to us. That, and, and it's like Jesus says, if you abide in me, I'll abide in you. I belong to God and he belongs to me. There's this relationship. I call him daddy God. I trust him. Him And the more I experience him, that trust deepens. And if I'll be vigilant to trust him in all things, hallelujah, to not lean on my understanding in anything. And that's what we're, that, that, that's where we're growing to day by day. We're not there perfectly yet, but we're growing there every day. We're maturing uh, to trust God with everything and do like Philippians 4 6 says we worry about nothing so throw your hands up this morning in surrender and say God take it all you can do it all you can do anything repent where you need to for when you've tried to work it out figure it out and take your place of rest 
run to that place of refuge. Because not only did David declare him to be a refuge, but then he declared in, in that Psalms 18, I will run into that place of safety. God is who he is, but who is he to you? Do you trust him with everything this morning? So we're going to stop there. I pray that this Sunday school lesson has blessed you. It has certainly blessed me and just called my attention to uh, to, to go and look at the, the, the things that I'm facing in this life and to be sure and to again decide that I'm going to trust God. I trust him that if he's allowing this in my life, he can work it for my good. Hallelujah. God bless you to those who are watching now and who will watch later. Be sure to like it and share. Uh, check us out. Uh, you can check out all of the lessons if you've missed any on our um, YouTube channel. God is all that and more. We have a channel, so go there and subscribe and let's get that off the ground. I love you and God bless you.